This right here is the most powerful Android phone in the world. Yes, it's an upcoming phone from Realme, it's yet to release, but we have got it for you guys. And it's packing the latest Snapdragon 8 Elite Gen 5. Now, we are obviously not allowed to show the back or the UI, but what we can talk about is the performance. While others have shown you some on-paper specs, some percentage improvement, and maybe some random graphs, we have done some actual testing here. Now, it might be limited because we are not allowed to talk about everything in this video, but still, it'll give you a very good look of what this new processor is capable of. But first, let's talk about the most obvious question. What is this naming? Snapdragon 8 Elite Gen 5. I mean, after getting used to the name 8 Elite from 8 Gen 1, 8 Gen 2, 8 Gen 3, all of us were expecting it to be called 8 Elite 2. But no, Qualcomm had some other plans. They went ahead and mixed up both old and new name to come up with something as creative as Snapdragon 8 Elite Gen 5. Wow. Now, name aside, let's talk about the architecture first. The all-new Snapdragon 8 Elite Gen 5 is based on TSMC's latest N3P process and there are 8 third gen Orion CPU cores. Two of them are clocked at 4.61 GHz and the remaining 6 are at 3.63 GHz. Now, the number of cores are same as last time, but the clock speeds are much higher than before. In fact, even if you compare it against the A19 Pro or the Dimensity 9500, the clock speeds on Snapdragon 8 Elite Gen 5 beats everything. Apart from that, you get the latest Adreno 840 GPU, a new hexagon AI NPU, and support for the faster LPDDR6 RAM, which even the latest iPhones don't have. So, in spec sheet and number wars, Snapdragon 8 Lead Gen 5 is kind of pulling everyone. But let's see if that changes in benchmarks and gaming. Benchmarks first. First of all, we ran 3D Mark. In Wildlife Extreme Stress Test, the phone scored 7640, which is way more than 8 Elite and also the brand new A19 Pro. But the stability is just 32%, which is way lower than others. Next up, in Solo Bay, the scores are again higher than both, but in Extreme Stress Test, A19 Pro takes the lead. If I talk about the stability, it's almost 84% on 8 Elite Gen 5, which is much better than others. And finally, in Steel Nomad Lite, 8 Elite Gen 5 scores better and it maintains the lead in the stress test as well. And that too with very good stability. Now, I know that you're waiting for N22 and Geek Punch, but the thing is, we are not allowed to talk about that in this video. I'm sorry. But I won't leave you hanging because I have seen some very interesting leaks. And as for the leaks, in N22, the scores are expected to be around 4 million, which is obviously way better than last time. And in Geekbench, the 8 Elite Gen 5 scores a massive 3800 in single core and 12400 in multi core. And just so you know, these scores are even better than the recent Intel Core Ultra and Ryzen 7 series chipset, which is just mind blowing. Enough of these benchmarks, let's talk about gaming. Starting with BGMI, where you obviously get the best settings, the game was playing smoothly at 120 FPS while maintaining an average FPS of 119.8 but the most impressive thing was temperatures. It was just 36 degrees throughout the gameplay which lasted 15 minutes. There were no lags, no frame drops or anything problematic at all. I also played COD Mobile in the ultra 120 FPS setting and again the average FPS was 120 in all three matches. The game fell it was gaming and the temperatures were also well in control. And finally, in Genshin Impact, I played it at the highest plus 60 FPS and I actually got 60 FPS throughout my gameplay. Even when I was in intense fights, there were no lags, no stutters and no frame drops at all. And here also, the temperatures never crossed or even touched 40. By the way, if you're wondering, I played the game for 30 minutes straight and still the average FPS was 60. Isn't that great? And then I thought of playing two games at once using the floating window to see if the phone struggles. But again, there were no frame drops and both the games were playing smoothly enough. So overall, the gaming experience has been really good, especially with the thermals. And I wonder if this can play GTA 6. Here's hoping. Okay. See, we had this device for only a day and we were only allowed to run a few things. But in my limited time with the device, I think the gaming experience have gotten much better and the thermals are also handled well. But this is what I feel from my initial testing. We'll obviously know better once I do a more in-depth testing. So yeah, that's pretty much everything for this video. I know I couldn't get too much into detail. There's a lot of stuff that I couldn't talk about and there's a lot more testing to do. But consider this video as an early sneak peek of the Snapdragon 8 Elite Gen 5. And once the retail units are out, we'll obviously do a more rigorous testing, more comparisons. So subscribe if you don't want to miss out on that. But for now, I hope you enjoyed this exclusive coverage. If you did, please press that like button as it really means a lot. And by the way, which Snapdragon 8 Elite Gen 5 phone are you excited for the most? Tell us in the comments. Thank you for watching and I'll see you in the next one.